Hi everybody, Bob Hubble here. We're going to talk about today one of the most important disclosures in, in a real estate transaction, and that's the TDS. Uh, the TDS is required by law that each seller fill out completely. Uh, sellers in California have a have an affirmative duty to disclose to sellers all material conditions or defects known to them which can affect the value or desirability of the property. Failure to do so can lead to liability from the buyer for damages as a result of the lack of disclosure. So it's important for you as a real estate agent to emphasize to your seller they must disclose everything they know about the property. And I mean emphasize everything they know about the property disclosed. You're gonna find in your career, you're gonna have sellers who are gonna be reluctant to disclose items because they, th they feel that the transaction would be jeopardized. But it's your duty as, as a real estate agent to convince them to, to fill out the disclosure completely and honestly and give as much information as they know about their property. You know, I can share, I can share numerous uh, examples that during my career that the TDS uh, became an object of uh, controversy between myself and the seller. Uh, as an example, I sold this property oh, several years ago, but it had a basement. Uh, had a basement, and, a, and inside the basement was an elevator shaft. And that elevator shaft during the winter leaked, and water came up through the shaft. So uh, let me get rid of that. So uh, the the owner, it's a brand new house. The owner was reluctant to to disclose that, and after a lot of conversation with a seller, he reluctantly agreed because I told him, if you don't disclose it, I'm going to disclose it on my habit. So again, this is going to keep you out of trouble, keep me out of, the, out of trouble as the broker to make certain, that, make certain that you disclose everything you know about the property. Another thing is there's, there's another form that uh, is commonly uh, not used, and that is the TDS. It's, it's called the MH TDS. This is the mobile home TDS. So if you are representing a seller on a mobile home, there's another TDS that must be uh, filled out. And I can let's see if I can do this without losing everybody. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can find it here. Okay, this is the manufactured home mobile home transfer disclosure statement. It's uh, it's different than the residential TDS because it has more uh, some information that pertains only to mobile homes. Uh, as you can see, th th some of the questions are are less. Um, here they have ten questions, whereas on the TDS or residential has sixteen. So again, when you're when you're Representing a seller with a mobile home, be sure that the that you use the correct form. And in this case, if it's a mobile home, be the mobile home TDS. Okay, let's go back to the TDS. Okay. Okay. Another thing about the TDS is the there are some exemptions. Uh, a TDS is not required for. Foreclosure properties, uh, sale of new homes, court order transfers. Uh, if there's a conservatory or guardianship or trust, uh, it's not required. Transfers to a spouse or a person or persons in the lineal line of, uh, anyway, transfers to a relative or a spouse. Uh, transfers resulting from a judgment or disillusionment, disillusion of marriage. So. Somebody who's getting divorced doesn't have to fill this out. If it's a co-owner of the property, again, the TDS is not required. Uh, if it's transferred by the state controller for unclaimed property or transfers for failure to pay taxes, uh, transfers from any government entity. So there are some exceptions when you do not have to use the TDS. And when that occurs, then you'll need to fill out a form. Let's see if I can pull that up for you. It's the... It's the ESD, it's an exempt seller disclosure. So again, all those exemptions that I read to you, you don't, a, a TDS is not required, however, this form is, the ESD. 
and you go through it self-explanatory it has several of the questions that are on the TDS but again uh, somebody who hasn't lived in the property or, or for instance a, a divorce situation where they have lived in the property there's no need to, to, to fill out the TDS okay we'll go back to the TD we'll go back to the TDS for you and we'll start from the top Okay, again, those of you working with our transaction coordinator, she will prepare a package for you which will include the proper form. But if you don't use a transaction coordinator, again, you need to make certain that all the disclosures are, are provided to the buyer. Okay, starting from the top here, uh, fill out, situate in the city of, put the city, uh, Grover Beach, County, San Luis Obispo, Adre address would go here. The date would go here. If you have any inspection reports, a pest report, a well report, or anything of that nature, then mark one of these boxes, one of these boxes. And then again, you do not fill out this TDS. This is to be filled out by your seller, by your client. Okay, so section A asks that you check boxes regarding appliances, fixtures, and items on the property and whether or not they're in operating condition. So just have your seller go through here and mark what they have on the property. Uh, are there, to your knowledge, um, anything that's not operating in operating condition? If they mark yes, then you need to explain. If uh, you run out of room, uh, you could put it on another sheet of paper addendum. But uh, be thorough, make sure you're, they're thorough. Uh, the garage door openers, you know, if, if your client says, well, I've, I had two, but I, I think I only have one in my car. Well, then mark one. If you mark two, you're going to be paying for a garage door opener. That's just the way it is. So uh, uh, anyway, you can go through these. And you can help your client, but again, it's their responsibility to fill this form out. Okay, we'll go over here to page two. Are, are you, the seller, aware of any significant malfunctions in any of the following? Interior walls, ceiling, floors, anyway, all of this here, if there's any defect or malfunction in any of these, then again, they need to describe it here on this line. Uh, they can also use additional sheets of paper and attach it to the TDS as well. Okay, then there's a series of 16 questions here that they'll need to fill out. Uh, substance, materials, and products which may be an environmental hazard, such as but not limited to asbestos, malgahyde. Anyway, that's normally a no, but uh, could be different. Uh, features of property shared in common with adjoining landlords. Uh, fences and driveways are very common. So again, if they mark yes, then down here, they'll have to explain, you know, fence, borders, uh, neighbor's property, and is shared. Uh, any encroachments, easements, or similar matters that may affect your interest in the subject property. You know, if there's an easement on the property that they're aware of, then it needs to be marked here. It will show up in the prelim report, but uh, if, if they're aware of an easement, then they mark yes. And down here, they would put uh, pg and &E easement uh, traveling through the left corner of the property. Uh, room additions. Uh, this is very common in... Uh, in uh, Santa Barbara County, where structural modifications are made and with no permits. So if, if your seller is aware that there are no permits or you're aware that there's no permits, then they, they would mark uh, yes. And then explain down here, uh, garage converted uh, permits not obtained by the city. Uh, any settling from cause slippage um, or other soil problems, if they know of any that mark that, flooding, Damp drainage or grading problems. Again, a lot of these are self-explanatory, and it's up to your seller to mark, be honest and uh, and mark what is what is appropriate. Neighborhood noise problems or other nuisances. You know, if you're next to a, an industrial area and there's a lot of noise from from uh, early morning to mid afternoon, then then you need to report that. Uh, CC&Rs and other deed restrictions, again, this will show up in the preliminary report, but uh, if, if there are CC&Rs, then, then mark the yes and explain it down below. 
homeowner association, uh, you should know this as an agent, whether or not there's an HOA on the property because you've already advertised it. So that would, that would mark that as appropriate. Any common area, again, this uh, condominiums have, uh, have a lot of common areas. Uh, some houses on flag lots are sharing uh, walkways and, and driveways. So that would have to be marked as yes. Any notices of abatements or citations against the, against the property. If the property receives a citation from the city uh, for high weeds in the, in the back lots, uh, that needs to be reported. And of course, any, this is a, any lawsuits by or against a seller threatening to or affecting the real property claims or damages by the seller pursuant to 9, 10, 14, threatening to or affecting this real property. So if your seller knows well, your seller would know if there's a lawsuit against the property, they're going to have to, to uh, disclose it to the, to the prospective buyer. Okay, and again, if you need additional sheets, um, provide those to your seller. Uh, don't try to squeeze everything in there if it's going to be uh, extensive. Attach it to another sheet. And you can actually just write in here, see attached, uh, see attached supplement or see attached addendum or see attached sheet. Uh, the seller certifies that the property as of close it will be in compliance with, uh, with 13113.8 of the health and safety code. Uh, that's talking about uh, smoke detectors. Uh, the seller certifies the property as close will be in compliance with the health and safety. This has to do with the water, water heater tank. So, so make certain if they mark yes, that, it, that the water heater is actually strapped and there are smoke detectors inside the property. And you'll be able to do that when you do your, your AVID. And we'll go over the AVID here short, uh, soon too. Okay, next line. Seller certifies the information is correct to the best of seller's knowledge. Uh, have, your, have your seller sign here, date here. Of course, put the property address and the date up here. That will automatically populate from the first page. Um, down here, see attached agent's visual inspection disclosure. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, go ahead and mark, mark that, and uh, you'll be required to do the AVID. Remember, the AVID uh, is to be done in the first seven days that you're in escrow, and it's attached to this TDS. Down here, uh, you're representing the seller, so you would sign, uh, this would be Hubble Real, Hubble Real Estate Group, buy, and your name here, and date it. Uh, agent's inspection, this is completed by the agent representing the buyer. So the agent would mark here their inspection, and uh, they would sign uh, uh, the, the name of their company here, their name, and date. Uh, buyer or seller may wish to obtain professional advice and in our inspections of the property and provide for appropriate provisions and a contract between buyer and seller with respect to any advice or inspection defects. You'll see that many of our disclosures are telling the buyer they really need to get this property inspected by a professional, whether it's a contractor or a home inspector. And, uh, and uh, this is just another disclosure for them to do that. Uh, the seller signs here, you would sign here, the Hubble Real Estate Group here, your signature here, uh, the buyer's agent company here, your name here, and date. Okay, now, there's something else I wanted to cover too. Uh, it's, a, it's a sheet that I will provide to you Well, unfortunately, I don't see it here in front of me, but uh, it's a sheet that I'll provide for you, but it's the 10 most common mistakes made by agents in uh, doing the TDS. And uh, generally it talks about not advising your seller to, to disclose everything they know about the property. Um, another, probably the most, uh, most common mistake is that the agent the agent representing the seller will fill out this TDS. If you go to court, if you go to court, that's going to be a big red flag for us. It's going to get you in trouble. It's going to get me in trouble. So it's okay. Like I said, it's okay to help your seller uh, 
prepare this this uh, this disclosure, but don't you physically fill it out or or write in what you think is is the defect. Okay, let your seller do it. Um, any rate, that covers the that covers the TDS.